Hello everyone, and welcome to the Genius 3 Tympanic Thermometer Calibration video. In this video, we will cover the following topics. A calibration from start to finish, some errors you might encounter and how to troubleshoot them, as well as resources that we have available. The Genius Calibrator can be used to calibrate both G2s and G3s. So in preparation for the calibration, I do suggest you set yourself up first. As you can see, we have our probe covers ready to go. Please make sure you're using a new probe cover each time you switch from the high to the low targets and back. Do not touch them. Oil from your fingers can contaminate the cover. When it's first switched on, you'll get a message that you should allow 15 minutes for it to warm up. This is to allow the unit to adjust to the ambient temperature and ensures the targets are stable. It's really important to make sure you have a stable ambient temperature in the room that you're doing the calibration. Drafts from air conditioning, in addition to the actual room temperature, may give you some problems and you will get an error six, which is the ambient temperature out of range error, or the calibration will fail. So once the 15 minutes is up, we can continue by pressing down on the main knob. This here is the main menu. You use the main knob to toggle up and down and press down to select. Under preferences, there is the option for language selection. You can also select time and date, but most of the time you will just want to calibrate a genius unit. So you will select the first option. If you would like, you can produce a calibration report. It's quite a thorough report. Simply add a USB to the calibrator. A USB with an LED light will let you know that it's connected successfully as it will start flashing. You can proceed to the next step using the toggle button and pressing down on the main knob. So now the calibrator is just making sure the targets are stable and within specifications. As you can see, the low target is about 32 degrees Celsius and the high target is just over 40.5 degrees Celsius. You will then be directed to check that the lens is clean. Once you've completed this, press to continue. At this point, you will connect the thermometer to the calibrator using the cable. Make sure you have the right cable for the right thermometer model. The cable for the G3 is gray in color, as you can see. You can clip it in like so. Then you'll be directed to press the scan button on the thermometer, which will power on the thermometer before a probe cover is loaded onto the probe tip. Make sure you don't add a probe tip beforehand. Normally, after you press the scan button on the thermometer, wait about three seconds before pressing to continue. If you press continue too quickly, the calibrator doesn't have enough time to establish communications with the thermometer and you will get a communication error, which is error two. When I press to continue, you can see the screen has prompted you to perform the next steps. When the light next to the low target starts flashing, you'll need to attach a new probe cover and insert the unit into the low target. Press the scan button and wait a few seconds for the screen to change and the light to start flashing in the high target. Change the probe covers and repeat. Make sure you don't point the thermometer at anything. Don't point it at the LCD screen of the calibrator. It's best to go straight from the probe cover cassette to the target. Otherwise, you may get error nine, which is when the genius thermometer readings is not consistent. If you were used to calibrating before the recent software upgrade, you may not be used to the, these new display screens. You may also be used to the first two times being a calibration check. However, the variances limit on the calibrator was intentionally tightened so the thermometers will rarely pass a check and will force a calibration. Also, more calibration attempts will be required. If you take too long, you may get an error three, but that's okay, just continue on. It will just mean you have to start again. As you can see, 
it's pretty straightforward. Flashing lights indicate which target to use, and there are prompts on the screen as well. So we're going back and forth from low to high target and swapping probe covers in between each step. You really do need to concentrate here because if you get distracted and accidentally place the thermometer in the wrong target, you will have to repeat all the steps over again. As you can see, we have failed calibration. The difference between the target and the thermometer is too great, so we have to repeat. So again, going a second time now. And we have now passed calibration. Here again, you can see the variance and it is acceptable and within accuracy again. When completing a calibration, the Genius Calibrator does a self-check at the end. So you can be assured that the thermometer is tightly calibrated with the completion of a successful calibration. The thermometer should not be checked again unless a recalibration is desired. The successful completion of a calibration confirms that the thermometer is within specifications. If the user would like to obtain a copy of the calibration report, they can select to save it to the USB if desired. If the calibration fails, it may be necessary to repeat the process up to two to four or even five times. Calibrations may take five to 20 minutes, depending on how many times the calibration is repeated on one thermometer. If the unit won't calibrate, it may be worth checking the lens is clean and going through the cleaning steps again. If it still isn't working, the unit may require replacement. Please contact your local Cardinal Health representative to organize for repair or replacement. Now just having a look at some of the potential errors that may come up during calibration. I mentioned error six, which relates to the ambient temperature. Try and find a room that is fairly stable in temperature. The ambient temperature must be between 21.1 degrees Celsius to 26.7 degrees Celsius and free of any drafts. Around 23 degrees Celsius is what I find usually works best. The calibrator, the thermometers, and the probe covers must all be acclimated to this temperature. If you're getting error two, also known as the communication error, this is usually to do with the connection to the cable. The most common fix for error two is making sure you don't press continue too quickly after connecting the cable to the thermometer and pressing the scan button to switch it on you need to give it enough time to establish communications with the calibrator before continuing. If you're still getting error two, make sure you're using the right cable for the right thermometer model. Make sure it's clean and secure. You can clean the pins of the cable connector or pads of the thermometer board with a cotton swab dipped in alcohol. Allow the alcohol to evaporate fully before continuing. If this doesn't seem to work and you're still getting error two, switch off the calibrator for a minimum of five seconds and then switch it back on. Don't worry about waiting the 15 minutes again as it's already acclimatized to the room temperature. If you're getting error five, which is the error when you try to write a USB drive, Ensure the USB drive has a capacity between 128 megabytes and 8 gigabytes and is not full or write protected. Make sure to install the USB drive at least 30 seconds before you commence and make sure it's flashing before attempting to write on it. For best results, have the USB device plugged in before powering on the calibrator. Again, if neither of these work, then try switching the calibrator off and on quickly. You can bypass the 15 minute timer if the calibrator was already warmed up. We have several resources available. 
including the operating manual for the thermometers themselves, as well as a separate operating manual for the calibrator. We have a cleaning guide, which shows you how to clean the device itself and what sort of products to use. We have a tips and tricks brochure to troubleshoot any high or low readings on the ward. We also have a calibrator troubleshooting guide that houses a lot of what I've discussed today in a simple guided format. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. Bye for now.